Final Four, standing in the Huskies' way, Old Dominion and... My God. <laughs> This one-on-one, -on -one, you go at. Let's roll over, sleeve and go to work. Dish off, underneath, score! And the party now is just started. Huge shot oh, toward a national the championship. The building is erupted. Colorado gets respect for the ball. Forces up a shot. Stunning upset. As you thought, Matt. Three, score! There's nothing to fear in postseason other than the fact that if you don't play tonight, you can go home tonight. We've just eight teams left, and when the smoke clears tonight, the final four. All the way. U.S. Cellular Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where UConn is looking to check off one more goal on its list. Standing in their way is a very good number seven seed, Old Dominion Lady Monarchs, looking to hand Connecticut its first defeat of the season. Here's how they Connecticut with a win over the four seed Penn State and Old Dominion beating the number three seed Kansas State. Welcome everyone, Michelle Tavoy and Doris Marco with you from Milwaukee. Great to have you here for what could be a very intriguing matchup. When you talk about Connecticut, everything begins and ends with Naismith Player of the Year, Sue Bird. The best point guard in America takes defenses apart with remarkable precision. In transition, whether she's looking to score herself or attack and get other people buckets, she makes Connecticut the most dangerous offensive team in the nation. According to Wendy Larry, they're number one because the ball is in the hands of the master. Quite a compliment. Now, when these teams met back in December, ODU star Lucienne Bertou, not as healthy as she is right now. Bertou took apart Kansas State inside. She's six foot two with a powerful frame. She can contend with Connecticut up front. But this team has got to think three things tonight in order to win. Number one, you've got to rebound the ball competitively. They've proven they can do that. Secondly, you've got to limit the easy baskets Connecticut gets in transition. And number three, and perhaps most important, you've got to be able to counterpunch, absorb the blows, and still come out swinging. Two teams remain here in Milwaukee, the top seed Connecticut and the number seven seed Old Dominion. ODU has defeated a number three and a number two to get this far. Can they beat a number one here in the Mideast Regional Final to get to the Final Four in San Antonio? Welcome back to Milwaukee, the Mid-East Regional Final. One of these teams is going to the Final Four. Old Dominion, the number seven seed, versus the number one seed, Connecticut. Francis, Maiga, Coker, Birtu, and Thompson starting for Old Dominion. And for Connecticut, the familiar lineup of Bird, Tarasi, Williams, Cash, and Jones. And we check in on the sidelines tonight with Beth Mowens. Beth? Well, Michelle, a common problem for Connecticut opponents this year has been the fact that they run out of gas. UConn has the ability to wear teams down as the game progresses. ODU hopes that won't be a problem tonight. When they met during the regular season, the score actually got tighter as the game progressed, and Old Dominion made a late run. The keys to the game that Norris alluded to, they think they have the ability to counter. Five of their last six games, they have had a different player lead them in scoring, and they have size and speed, which has caused Connecticut some problems this year. Michelle? Well, Beth, it's the size and speed that Gino Auriemma, the head coach of UConn, pointed out as being something that would make this a very, in his words, interesting matchup. <laughs> Maiga and Cash jump it up in the middle, and Maiga comes away with it. Hamsha to Maiga, number 25. The Colonial Athletic Association Player of the Year last year when Bear 2 was out with an injury. Do they open with a turnover? They save it. Connecticut giving some double team attention already to Lucy Ann Bertou. That was an easy shot, and they dodged an early bullet. Swin Cash coming away with the rebound. It looks like they're going to shade off Monique Coker and see whether she's willing to shoot the jump shot. That's exactly what you don't want to see if you're Wendy Larry. Diana Tarazi can get hot in a heartbeat, and she opens up. Draining it from outside. I'll tell you this, Wendy Larry pointed out Diana Taurasi in the press conference yesterday, questioned her defensive abilities. is the kind of player who does not like to be questioned. That's motivation for her. Passes up that shot, hands it off to Super. And immediately, Wendy Larry 
referee says time out. You talked about transition, Doris. Well, it's the thing they do better than anyone else at this point because they can score from five spots. Everybody runs a lane. The posts go down the middle. Diana goes left side of the floor. They keep you spread. They've got great three-point shooters. Remember, the last time these two teams met, they only hit one three-point shot, Connecticut. They've drained two. Things have changed just a bit. They have. Wendy Larry knows about the big post play inside for Connecticut, and they certainly want to defend that. But when you've got two exquisite shooters on the outside like Tarazi and Bird, it's dangerous to sag off of anyone. 5-0 Connecticut out in front, and a quick 30-second timeout called by Wendy Larry, the head coach of Old Dominion, a player there in her college days, graduated 77. And Connecticut comes with pressure straight up. How do they handle it? Coker, the miss, the rebound, and put back by Lucien Bertou. That is the intensity I'm sure Wendy Larry was hoping to see earlier. Well, and that's that's the kind of mentality Penn State had. When they played with Connecticut that first 20 minutes, they said, all right, you want to score? We're going to come right back aggressively and get our own score. Oh. The problem is, can you score as often and as easily as Asia Jones made that one look right there for Connecticut. Yeah, I think you've got to be more sound defensively. And, and it was interesting, Reedy Green said in transition, she would like to guard outside in, spot up the shooters and then get in. But I'll tell you, their secondary break is as lethal. Monique Coker, another shot, the rebound by Tarazi. Look out, here comes Bird all alone. That's money. Well, Sharon Francis is your point guard. Coker was the one out in safety and she did not do a good job getting back. In the Sweet 16 game against Penn State, UConn was not happy with the way they played defense. It looks like they've come out with a completely reinvigorated defensive effort. Here are the fast break points. Almost turned it over again. Maiga with nine on the shot clock, can't get the roll. The fight for the rebound is called a jump ball, possession to Connecticut. Yeah, we said that the first thing that you had to do defensively was stop transition, and right away, it's seven zip and transition points, the release and run out by Bird. Connecticut does that better than any team in the country. You see the Duke-South Carolina score there. South Carolina had a lead a little bit earlier, but Duke has come back. Bird again, and drawing the foul. Now this is something that happened quite often in their first meeting in December. Players getting to the foul line. A total of 49 fouls the first time these two teams met. It was a trip up and down the floor. And watch Bird. Here's why this is a different team of late, because her mentality is, I am a capable scorer. I'm going to attack the rim if that's what the defense gives me. Sharon Francis called for her first, and Bird at the line is about as short as you can get. A 93% free throw shooter. One of the many reasons she was the National and Big East Player of the Year. Makes them both. 11-2. You know, Gino always tells his team, we're going to go on a run eventually. Mm. Well, they, they went on their run immediately. We set up the start. You've got to absorb these blows. You're going to get hit, and you've got to take a standing eight count. Uh, do you have the physical and mental toughness to strike back? Connecticut, 11 points in five possessions. Sharon Francis looking around. That's Hamsha Tumaiga putting it on the floor. They're just not getting the roll on any of these buckets, not making the easy shots, but the putback goes for Bear 2. Yeah, Bear 2's got the quickness and the frame to go ahead and match up inside. The problem is, it's only one of them. I think Coker and Maiga have got to help on the glass. Williams finding Swin Cash all alone, and one. There are times, Michelle, where you can find somebody on a team that you don't have to guard. For Gino Arema, his team is good, is good from five spots. And if you do this, make the mistake of giving too much attention to one player, the weak side is wide open. Swin Cash, a nice step two. Lucien Bertou called for the foul that sends Cash to the line. A 69 or 70 percent shooter makes that one. So a 14-4 opening few minutes for Connecticut. A 10-point lead, getting off to a quick start that was a bit of the Husky trademark this season. This is a simply a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press with a look to trap and spots. Tarasi steals it, gets it to Cash. Easy bucket. Do you use another one if you're Wendy? She's thinking about it. I she think she is. wants to wait for the TV timeout. 
keep in mind, if you did not see Old Dominion play in its Sweet 16 game against Kansas State, they were brilliant. But Kansas State helped them out a little bit. Didn't adjust defense too often. And this team shot 65.5% from the field. And now they've got a three-second violation. Early scoring runs, as we mentioned, just a part of what Connecticut does best. 10-0 to start the first round, 17-4 to start the second round, and here we are tonight. Penn State kept them at bay a little bit in the third round. Another easy one for Asia Jones. Things coming too easily. As sound as Wendy Larry's defense has been and their rebounding throughout this tournament, it has eluded them tonight. Perfect from the field. Zone, but they match up out of it. They're going to come hard and find people. Maiga looking to get it inside to Lucien Bertou. The outside shot doesn't fall, and the rebound eventually grabbed by Asia Jones. Two man game. Cash and Bird cash it in. Decision making. You want your point guard to be sound in those situations. Understand two on one basketball and give it up at the right time. And there's the good look to Lucien Bertou that Gino Oriema knows Old Dominion can create. He said they're good at getting the ball to her. She's the right person, and when they get it to her in the right spot, they can hurt you. And a steal now, and that's Tiffany Thompson who got a hand in, deflecting the pass. And here comes Sharon Francis. She'll take it all the way, and a blocking foul. I believe that'll be charged to Swin Cash. First on Cash, but Wendy Larry's team trailing 20 to six after such a good performance last round, she's gotta be questioning things. And it was a little bit of a different ball game. Old Dominion, one of just two teams to out yeah, rebound. That number right there, yeah. folks, 48-42. Right now it's five to two Connecticut. The reason you want to compete on the glass, Michelle, is because that limits your transition opportunities. If you're rebounding aggressively on the offensive end, then that prevents Connecticut from getting those runouts. And that is Swin Cash, who had 29 in that first meeting, a career high. She didn't have one of her best games against Penn State in the Sweet 16 game. And I think she is really looking to redeem herself tonight. A unanimous first team all Big East pick, led the conference in scoring and rebounding. This one off the foot of Connecticut back to ODU. Let's check in with Beth Mullins. Well, Michelle and Doris, you guys were exactly right. Wendy Larry said, hey, let's just take this one possession at a time. We just have to restart, and the key is on the glass. The forwards will be crashing. They need more second-chance opportunities and look for the guards to get back a lot better than they have been thus far, guys. And she hopes Beth not traveling often. Three turnovers now for Old Dominion. Yeah, surprisingly, yesterday's Connecticut practice I felt was remarkably tense. Uh, Gino Oriema at one point I think was about to throw his team out of the gym. He did not like what they were doing defensively. He was upset with their defense in the first half against Penn State. And it, it was a struggle, I think, for the assistant coaches and players to convince him to stay in this gymnasium and work on some things. Second turnover by Connecticut. He's a fiery motivator, and he knows how to get into the heads of his players. He, he can work them, and I think he really did in that practice. Bear two, shot no good, got deflected, and into the hands of Williams, the long pass into the hand of Bird, and she is fouled. Again, one opportunity, board it hard, and this is what they do to you. Long outlet passes. The ball doesn't hit the deck. It's a one outlet pass, another outlet pass. It puts a tremendous amount of pressure on you defensively. And a nice inbound look. It'll stay on this end. By the way, it was Okisha Howard with that last foul, and now the second on Lucien Bertou. Two fouls on your best player with 14.24 to go in the first half. And it looks like a sub is coming in for Bertou. That's Kim Giddens. You know, Bertou got in foul trouble in the first meeting. He was held at two points. She exploded for 15 in the second, but it wasn't enough. And here she goes again. She's got to understand her value. You can't afford that. Her value is that she scored all of Old Dominion's points so far. Tamika Williams knocked down. And another foul. 
And this was on Monique Coker. You see the bandage over her right eye. She was cut in the game versus Penn State. And patched her up and sent her right back in. Boy, was she valuable as a rebounder in that game. Yeah, it was rebounding where she got it. She went up hard. It was her teammate, Jessica Moore, I believe, who landed on her head, and it split when it made contact with the floor. Doesn't seem to be bothering. A little giggle there with the unconventional bank shot on the free throw. It's a really bizarre method she has to shoot free throws. She receives the ball and then steps away and without a dribble, shoots shots. You don't see that often. Usually players like to bounce it once or twice to get their rhythm. Once or twice or five times. She'll head to the bench and Jessica Moore, a redshirt freshman from Palmer, Alaska, comes in. Jessica Moore has been providing quality minutes down the stretch of this season. Helping to back up the post players. It's interesting, something you haven't seen a little 1-1-3 look. And now they're falling back into this 2-3 zone. Sharon Francis, the three-point attempt, rebound into the hands of Moore, and Sue Bird will slow it down. Leading 22-6, a good look to Moore, and she gets double-teamed immediately. Bird now pulls up. She's a difference maker in a lot of categories, but offensively, she's always been so unselfish. Her mentality has changed a little bit. She's become more aggressive offensively. And that's what Gina Ariama loved about her game against Penn State. And now Giddens into the game for Bear 2, finding the bucket. So between Giddens and Bear 2, ODU has eight points. Six of those by Bear 2 on the bench with two fouls. A whistle now and a three-second violation called against UConn. Super, one of the things that she has in her repertoire that's most lethal is a one dribble pull up. This time she uses several dribbles, goes baseline, body control, straight up off the bounce. Pretty. And Gina Ariema says when Sue Bird starts making shots, forget it. She is just too good a player. And she did right out of the gate. Now a foul called, and I think it's on Cash, and if it is, it'll be her second. So now two very good players on the bench, one for each team. Cash goes out. Williams in. Uh, you're making a play pretty far away from the basket. I'm not sure this one is one that you'll look back on if you, you get in trouble later as a good one, because that's a long way away from the rim. Keisha Howard driving baseline, doesn't get the bucket, but does draw the foul, and that's on Bird. And that'll be the first on the senior. Now, this is something Oriema talked about yesterday in his press conference. He said, if the whistle starts blowing too much, the kids are going to get confused out there as to what they can get away with and what they can't. Now you see Sue Byrne, what she was saying was, I'm staying vertical. Vertical. But you've got to give Howard some credit. As an offensive player, you lean in, and you force that official to make a decision. And the first game between these two, Howard off the dribble was successful. Howard broke a bone in her right leg mid-January in a game versus George Mason. Missed six games. But a 78.5% free throw shooter. She's valuable at the line. Cuts the lead to 14. A little extension of pressure here, 2-2-1. Two, two, a great pass to Jones from Williams. If you want to make somebody back off pressure, attack it to score and make them pay. Amsha to Maiga, driving into the paint, loses it out of bounds, back to Yukon. They're playing her for the dribble drive, boy. And this against a little 2-2-1 two, two, pressure. Everybody spread, you get the ball to where the defense is not, and then touch pass inside, boy, that's just pretty. And it's Doris. nice that your power forward can make that kind of touch pass. And you hate to gush, but that's just textbook. 12-22 mm. to go, first half. Sue Byrne almost losing the handle there. Tarasi now from way downtown. Oh, my goodness. That gets a smile, a quick trigger. Gets her feet set, even coming right to left, which is tough for a right-handed shooter. UConn is a perfect 11 of 11 from the floor. Old Dominion, 4 of 13, thus the 29-10 lead. A timeout, 29-10. Connecticut loves the word jubilations, their tribute to Dick Vitale. Don't jubilate too early, though.
leading Old Dominion 29-10 here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at U.S. Cellular Arena. And we are being treated to something special. Connecticut 11 of 11 from the field, 2 of 2 from three-point range, 5 of 5 from the stripe, and 10 assists on 11 field goals thus far. Beth Mullins, Doris Burke, Michelle Tipper along with you here from Milwaukee. And Hamsha to Maiga on the inbounds play gets an easy one. Good execution by Old Dominion. That's a timing play. Maiga, great cut. And Monique Coker is battling Tamika Williams. Guarding her well. Cross-court pass to Maria Conlon, seeing her first minutes in this game. She is a three-point shooting specialist. Tarasi from way downtown, look out! Yeah, you try to see where she steps a foot or so by, you know, beyond the arc. It's maybe not to come and guard her, but you've got to. She's got unlimited range. Very strong, and now a trap on Francis. She gets rid of it to Coker. Monique Coker had a very good game against Kansas State. Let's check in once again with Beth Holmes. Beth, what do you got? Well, obviously in that UConn huddle, not a whole lot of uh, fine-tuning needed. Interesting, Coach Oriema doesn't need to use a lot of emotion, doesn't need to use a lot of mental stuff with this senior-laden group. A lot of just drawing up plays. They wanted to attack inside and kick it out to Tarasa. Obviously, that's what they did that last time. She nailed the three, Michelle. She did. And this one wasn't as textbook as he would like, the turnover there, but look at how far back Tarasi is. Well, they came aggressively, but you see Howard a little bit slow to react outside. I think she was thinking about giving assistance on the block. Diana Tarasi, a 45% shooter from behind the arc, and UConn up 20. Ten and a half to play here in Milwaukee. Winner to the Final Four in San Antonio, and that is something that you're undefeated at 36-0. People expect of you, but this UConn team still feels pressure, and Kim Giddens of ODU wants to keep the pressure on. But Giddens has gotten into the scoring column. She's going to have to do more of that. With their two on the bench in this half, it'll be interesting to see this money take a chance and come back with her. That is just an unbelievably perfect pass from Suber to Jessica Moore. And they spread just so well. I mean, they keep their spots on the floor. They run their cuts precisely. Now 13 of 13. And seven assists for Bird. But how about that for Howard? Okisha Howard, the 5'5 junior, drains a three of her own. She hits about 29% from behind the arc. Bird, a rare miss. Jessica Moore, the putback doesn't go. And coming away with it, Sharice Grant, a freshman, and now a foul called. Well, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship continues tonight at 9.30 Eastern time on ESPN. It's the Midwest Regional Final as Chantel Anderson and number one seed Vanderbilt face the second seed of Tennessee Vols and Michelle Snow. ESPN and ESPN2, your exclusive home for the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Contrast and styles right there. The run and gun Lady Vols versus a slow down, banging inside to Chantel Anderson. And there is Okisha Howard again. The junior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, now has eight points. Well, what did Nell Fortner tell us when we started this show here? She said, you've got to hit some outside jumpers. Well, Howard's done that for them. But again, there's that backdoor look to Sue Bird, the layup good. 36-20. The eighth time Connecticut's been a number one seed. And when they are number one, they do quite well in this tournament. Maria Conlon back to Tarasi. The quick passing is very impressive, and Tamika, or excuse me, Asia Jones drains that one. Well, Asia Jones has got a variety of moves. She could face up and shoot the jump, or put it on the deck, or do that, play back to the basket. I thought she took a hit. Gino calls her the Greek philosopher. She can come in the room, say something, and leave, and you kind of go, what? But she has what he calls a killer sense of humor. Turnover. On Old Dominion, a foul called, and it's on Sharon Francis. Uh, what Connecticut does is they take you out high, and if you over-deny, as Howard does in that picture, you go right back door. Just a great read by Sue Bird. Outstanding pass from Tarazi. 
There are two still on the bench. The Colonial Athletic Association Player of the Year three times over. Out with two fouls, and Wendy Larry looking to save her. Conlon finding Jones, and Swin Cash trying to get to it, but it's Sharon Francis who comes away with it. Oh, nice look to Sharice. Now, they had numbers all the way. Excellent decision and smart play by Cash. You don't want to compound your mistakes and get a foul there. Sharice Grant converting off the pass from Francis. Swin Cash gets hacked a little bit by Francis. And hangs on. Defense a little bit more aggressive at the moment with this smaller lineup of Old Dominion. Seven on the shot clock for Tarasi. Oh, tough shot. I tell you, she's been criticized for being too much of a jump shooter and not being able to attack. Well, folks, she likes shooting a jumper, but hitting the deck is perfectly fine with her as well. That pull-up jump shot, boy, that makes her hard to guard. She is four of four. Ten points for Tarasi with 7.18 to play for his half. Grant misses it. Conlon with the rebound. Tarasi, the long pass to Asia Jones, who's standing just right underneath the glass, puts it up and in. Now, you cannot walk up the floor. Tarasi may very well be your starting point guard next season, and she is as fine a passer as Sue Bird is. 17 of 19 from the floor is Connecticut. Doris, you and I had the pleasure of watching them in the Big East Tournament, and we thought that their performances against Villanova and Boston College were near picture perfect. And Hamsha Tumaiga, the senior out of Mali, draining one for Old Dominion. I certainly didn't think they could play much better. And Gina's reaction at that was he was sort of stunned by how well they played, but boy, this half has been a sensational half. <laughs> Three-second violation, 6.23 to go, 42-24. Diana Taras. Won all their career at Connecticut and came there because we were number one. Uh, walks around like, yeah, I know, we got a game and we're going to play and we're going to beat in. And what are we going to do? I mean, there's no, um, it's not arrogance, it's not uh, anything other than they're very, very confident in themselves and that what we're doing is exactly what we should be doing. Gino Ariyama, no arrogance, he says, and you tend to believe him the more and more you talk to these players. They are just so disciplined. Mm. And as he says, we're just so talented, we're tough to beat. And now you, you, if you're demoralized, if you're Old Dominion, it's tough to try to get yourself to the locker room. Uh, get your head together, refocused. It's Ashley Battle who drew the foul for the squad, 36-0. Wire to wire, number one. And leading the nation in scoring, field goal defense, and scoring margin. And by the way, set a new NCAA record for assists on a single season, beating the 94-95 squad. Coming in for Old Dominion is Mariah Spence, and she is sporting a brand new mask because in practice yesterday, she took an elbow right to the bridge of the nose. And she sat out of practice for a minute, and it, yeah. they kind of stopped the bleeding, and back she went. And her first response when she heard there was a fracture was, I could still play, can I? <laughs> no one thought it was broken. But it is, and so to protect that, She's wearing the mask, but Doris, she's a three-point shooter, an outside shooter, and you, you hate the mask if you're a shooter. Well, shooters, you know, they don't like anything to impair their vision. Uh, certainly, it's a new experience for her. And she really did a nice job against Kansas State. I thought gave them very solid production and minutes off the bench. So they came in thinking that that depth was going to be important, but boy, the wind has been taken out of their sails. She is a sophomore guard out of Espanola, New Mexico, 19 years age of age, McCurdy High School. A very good player in New Mexico. Wow. E. Coker gets a lucky roll. And Tamika Williams comes back smiling because she got a piece of that. But then the outlet pass to Williams. And UConn will work it around. The senior bird to the senior Williams. And right off the glass and in. Four seniors in the starting lineup 
when you've played together that long and you've played competition like they've played, they get Tennessee on their slate, many other good teams, and you have so much NCAA tournament experience. Yeah, and the four of them are roommates. So you get the feeling that there's a friendship that will endure long after their playing days are over. This is an extremely tight-knit basketball team. While Old DU is shooting 42%, get this, UConn is shooting 90% from the floor right now. 90% and counting. Sue Bird from three. Well, Bird has got eight assists. She's now got 14 points to go with it. Out of Christ the King High School in New York. Average is about 14 a game, doing a little better than that here in the tournament. Well, anybody who questioned her player of the year status, that's has certainly been put to rest. Monique Coker finding her shot for Old Dominion. Coker now with four. Nice look inside to Asia Jones, doesn't fall. She does, she got fouled. Wendy Larry on the Old Dominion bench looks like she's seething, and that's the third foul on Lucienne Bertou. Pick and roll, open to the ball, the defense steps up, Coker makes a poor decision, then in help, Bertou is late, she can't afford to pick up number three. And yet she just did. Yeah, and it's silly, you know, step away from that. You're not in position, you gotta step away. Asia Jones, a 61% free throw shooter. Senior out of Piscataway, New Jersey, 21 years of age, and bear two with the third foul to the bench. Now, now this exact thing happened in their Purdue game. I was just going to bring that up. And it was Hamsha Tumaiga who stepped up. But she is not on the floor. And when Wendy Larry stares you down, then you don't want to be on that bench. Uh -uh, and I think Wendy's job is twofold here. Number one, she's got to make sure her team is in it mentally. She's also got to make sure they compete because Connecticut is showing why they are undefeated and the best team in the country. Close to 91%. They've missed two shots. They're 19 of 21. And the two misses came on the same possession. Mm. Every other possession, they've converted. Yeah, they're pretty good. 49-28. See, that third foul on Bear 2 changes the complexion not only for this first half, but the second half. That first eight or ten minutes, she's got to be careful. That one deflected out of bounds as we check in again with Beth Mullins. What's going on? Well, obviously, guys, some frustration over in the old Dominion huddle, particularly after Bear 2 picked up the third. But Wendy Larry, very good with her team. She said, hey, we have fought way too many battles to bail out now. We have to play hard and work together and fight back one possession at a time. She talked a lot about focus and the fact that they were able to rally and get close in the second half when these two teams met in the regular season. It's a long way to go, though, Michelle. It is that they, they have fought a lot of battles. I mean, they were perfect in conference, 18-0. This is a good team. This is a team that's played extremely well. They were obviously a better than a seven seed. And this is not the first team that Connecticut has taken apart. No. Jessica Moore running in and drawing the foul. Well, you want to learn how to, to run the pick and roll. There's a screen. You open to the basketball. You reverse it. You've got great position over there because your defender is caught off that screen. But they run that so well. A 60% free throw shooter converts the first as Asia Jones comes in to replace Ashley Battle. Hamsha Tumaiga in, and also back in is Tiffany Thompson for Old Dominion. Monique Coker was called for her second foul, so she's at the bench as well. Check out the deep knee bend. Jack Lane would be proud of Jessica Moore on this free throw attempt. Man, it's like a squat. It is. Misses the second one. A double dribble called, so basketball to the Lady Monarchs. And <laughs> Ori Emma say, saying, whoa, 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 what? In his press conference yesterday, he said he expected a good crew of officials. He said, in fact, I think we're going to have the best officials we've ever had at any regional anywhere on the planet. <laughs> and he said, are they in town yet? Are they going to know I said that? 
Straight up man to man. Connecticut's changed defenses several times this half. Good step in front by Tarazi. You want to question her defense? I think she'll make plays on that side. She's already had a block. Gets up a little slowly, but creates the turnover for Connecticut. So it's Maria Conlon, Jessica Moore, Sue Bird, Asia Jones, and Diana Tarazi. Conlon's three doesn't go. And a foul on the rebound. And stay tuned for the Marriott Halftime Report coming up next with Robin, Vera, Nell. I'll tell you all about that South Carolina Duke game. And you're watching the Huskies trying for perfection. And I'm sure they'll give you their analysis on this as well. Uh, Nell and I talked earlier today. We really believe that Old Dominion, and I know you did as well, Michelle Beth is safe there. Everybody thought that this would be a very competitive basketball game, and as yet, we have not seen that. Mopsha to Maiga driving, and Jessica Moore gets her hand on what she thought was all basketball. And Diana Tarazi ends up being called for the foul. That's her first. We always get a nice angle and a second chance, and you see the hook. She gets away with a little contact there now. Does she get back in time? Wow, that's on anybody. Uh, you would have thought it would have been on more, but I think they're calling the body contact on Tarazi. Tamika Williams back in for Jessica Moore. Hamsha to Maiga at the line. The senior, six foot one, 23 years old, out of Mali. He's played in Senegal as well, but just a 51% free throw shooter. First team all conference player. Misses both of those. Super trying to chase it down, but Kim Giddens gets it. And now Tiffany Thompson drains it. This is a six foot three. You can call her a forward, you can call her a center. But I think she thinks of herself as a guard. She can drain that and she can pass. Yeah, Wendy Larry joked about that yesterday. And Gino wants a timeout, and I think he, perhaps he thinks there's been a loss of focus. Uh, but this is your center, who maybe has a point guard mentality. You see that quite a bit. She's got a very nice stroke from three. She spends an awful lot of time away from the rim. Connecticut has been sensational passing the basketball. Uh, it comes from all five spots. And you talk about Sarazi and Bird being the best passing tandem ever. Well, guess what? Their forwards, their posts, everybody can flat out stick it. There are so many of their buckets. This system is run to perfection. And in timeouts, no matter how well you're shooting or passing or scoring or defending, Gina Auriemma will find something to talk about. And usually it's very constructive, and this team responds. Speaking of the passing, 15 assists on 19 field goals so far tonight. Well, here's an adjustment by Wendy Larry. She's going to give the 1-3-1 zone a look. And is that any more effective than the other defenses? Well, she's got to try something. Tarasi from the baseline, three-pointer. Now, you wonder why guard play is so important. Now, they make that switch off the timeout. Without looking back, the guards recognize, and they go right to the weak spot of the zone, that baseline side against a 1-3-1. Yeah, good slide down by Tarazi. 13 points, and she's perfect from three. All three of her three-point field goal attempts. Maiga gets her own rebound. Splits the double team and scores. A tough shot. She had 17 points and 17 rebounds against Purdue. Conlon, the miss. Asia Jones. And Tamika Williams ends up just sort of rolling it up there. No good. 53-33. five to go first half. Sharon Francis handling it for Old Dominion. On selection Sunday, Wendy Larry said, I was shocked we were a seven seed. They have not played like a seven seed, Doris. Mm -hmm. Tarasi pulling up, finally missing oh, from outside. Oh, oh my gosh! Super! That was as nice a pass and as good a presence of mind as you'll find. Now, was that actually, can you that, call that a pass? That was a pass. Uh, There's uh, no uh, question. Uh, Sue Bird crashed the board, saw the weak side. Nine assists, Doris. Her vision is exceptional. That is incredible. That's another miss. Cherise Grant. Another Princess Anne High School product. Conlon, oh, holy smokes. Conlon couldn't do much with that. But Sue Bird is, 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 if it's possible for her to get to another level, she's there right now. Tarasi, the miss. And to wind down the half. 
Tiffany Thompson launches one, but no good. <laughs> Obviously, 55-33. UConn playing as well as they have at any time all season. And Beth Bowens is with Gino Ariema. Beth. Thanks, Michelle. Well, an impressive first half, Gino. What do you tell these guys at the half now? What do you need to continue to work on? About blocking out on a free throw so they don't get any more offensive rebounds and knock in threes on us. Uh, you know, we played awfully well. We came out with a lot of energy and we played uh, uh, we played a lot of inspired basketball, you know. Uh, but they don't give you anything for winning the first 20 minutes. We still got a long way to go. What was in the pregame that had you guys coming out shooting the basketball so well tonight? Well, I, we're a good shooting team, you know, and I don't think I don't think we were very happy with the way we played the other night. And um, there's a trip to the Final Four at stake here. So uh, we got some seniors that understand what, what the situation is. Thank you, Gino. You're welcome. Michelle? Beth, apparently they do understand, or maybe no one better than Sue Bird. Look at this. The assist, one of her 10 to go along with 14 points. Already a double-double for Bird in the first half. 55-33. Robin, what more can you say? Undefeated, number one, looking for a national championship. When it comes to the UConn Huskies, been there, done that. All Huskies. That's do. UConn magic. It's almost like, yeah, they're 30 and 0 and they're number one. Oh, yeah, I've heard that before. It's UConn basketball. That is domination. We really truly believe that if we can just play our game, it doesn't even matter what the other team does. We come out and just give people our full punch, then I don't think anybody can beat us. A national championship seems like it doesn't count here unless you win all the games. Since I've been on the staff, you know, I always talk about the 35 and 0 year. No matter how great the practice is going or the games are going, that team is always better than our team. Until you go undefeated, you don't have anything on a 95 team. She always throws it at us, which gives me inspiration to win even more. To be the second Connecticut team to have an undefeated season, it would be something awesome. Are we supposed to win it? I don't know. Why? We work harder than any other program? I don't think so. We have. Tremendously talented players. Okay, well, does that entitle you to a national championship? You know, since when does your talent entitle you to anything? Can somebody beat us? Yeah, I think so. To go all the way undefeated um, would be pretty incredible considering only three other teams have done it. I think we'd go down in history. This is a great team, so why not? Are we capable of running through the tournament and not losing to anybody and doing it easily? Sure. I think everybody else is hoping we don't. You know, I think they're sick of Connecticut being undefeated. <laughs> Oh, Gino, he can't. He just can't help it, especially when you have players like this. Look at their backcourt. You see what this number is, why both Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi are Wade Trophy finalists for Player of the Year. Those two seniors, two of the four, Williams, Cash, Connecticut's got it going on. They're leading 55-33 at the half. Connecticut Huskies, 20 minutes away from a third straight appearance in the Final Four, second half ahead everyone Michelle Tafoya Doris Burke along with you and we are seeing one special basketball game a team UConn that really wants to get to the final four and if they're gonna win go on and continue to win this game they're gonna do it behind the play of their guards they've been sensational well the backcourt there's been some talk that this is perhaps one of the best backcourts ever in that first half 27 points and 15 assists between Bird and Tarasi uh, that's almost contributing to all of the points they've put on the board 75 percent from the floor is UConn shooting well from behind the arc out rebounding ODU as they have done to so many opponents and look at the 19 assists on field goals Diana Tarasi been deadly from behind the arc and Sue Bird I, this may be the best performance I've seen from her all year in a, in a half she has a double double already just the second of her career rather surprising but 10 assists 14 points there is Hamsha Tumaida who gets the role she was pivotal when they played Purdue and Lucien Bertu was on the bench with the foul trouble. So can she do it again? Coming right back with the steal. Well, uh, Hamsha Tumai is going to be the key. She's got to do this. Attack it aggressively. And how about that defense? Possession arrow other way as we check in with Beth Mullins. Beth, what do you got? Well, Michelle, talking with Wendy Larry coming out of the locker room, she just kind of shook her head and said, hey, that was a clinic. There's nothing that we can do when they're shooting that well. you got to hope they start to cool off. And she told her team, hey, we don't have to play them for a full 40 minutes now. It's a 20-minute game. It's brand new for us. We still have to continue to attack and don't even bother peeking at the scoreboard, guys. Yeah, that, that's not going to help if you look up and you see the 20-point lead. 
Missed by Asia Jones, but a foul on the rebound. And I'm thinking it's Tiffany Thompson, and it is called for the block. Yeah, they give Okisha Howard the start here in place of Bear Two to avoid that fourth foul early. But it's a smaller lineup. Thompson's got to go ahead and rebound. And in contending with Tamika Williams, she picks up one early. First foul on Thompson. Tarazi working her way outside around the arc, and there it is again. Yes. She just looks so comfortable. Well, see, I don't think if I'm Wendy Larry, I question her defense, because Tarazi's one of those players who gets motivation from things that people say about her. Uh, I think Tennessee fans will remember that Sally Jank is a writer from the Washington Post, called her the uh, an ego that has her own zip code, and she took offense at that. And, came out her freshman season and had a sensational year. Now in her sophomore year, you question her defense. She makes a good play on one end and comes back and sticks a three. 16 points, four of five from behind the arc. Six of eight altogether from the floor for Tarazi. A sophomore sensation and misses there, but Swin Cash fighting for the rebound and they'll call it a jump ball. Possession arrow to Old Dominion. Maiga, we talked to Nell Fortner about her a little bit, and she finds a resemblance physically in what she's able to do to Ruthie Bolton Hollyfield. And I think Wendy Larry can see a little bit of that as well. Keisha Howard driving into the baseline, gets fouled. They'll call it. Fouls on Williams. Wasn't sure if that was on Bird or not, but Tamika Williams, and it's her first. Well, you see, with Bird two out, now you go and attack off the dribble drive, because that's your best offense right now. You can't pound it into the post. You've got to use good guard play to get back in this thing. Okisha Howard, five foot five, 21 years of age, a second team All Colonial Athletic Association player. First team last year, but the injury and the missed six games with the broken bone in the right foot hurt her. Makes them both their best free throw shooter. And she can be a factor. She was the tournament MVP in the CAA. She came up big. Can she come up big enough here? And how do you just answer someone that's constantly forcing you to answer? You can't stop that. What does point guard do? Get it to the middle of the floor, because that's where you've got the most options. They don't guard her, and she sticks it. Howard being guarded by Bird and runs right into the UConn defender. This ball will go the other way. And what you tell your point guard as often as possible is to do this. Head right for the middle of the floor because your options open up. And if you don't stop basketball, Sue Bird has proven capable offensively. This is why she is a finalist for point guard of the year and probably the number one draft pick at the WNBA. People seem to concur about that. I mean, she just, there aren't that many great point guards. And she is better than great. Another rebound to Tamika Williams. And miscommunication right over the head of Tarasi. Sue Bird calls a timeout as she's falling out of bounds. 60 37. 17 18 to play. 17 18 between UConn and their third straight Final Four. ESPN and ESPN2, home of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Dominion up, UConn up 60-37. Vanderbilt, Tennessee follows us here on ESPN at 9.30 Eastern. Over on ESPN2, Duke and South Carolina are duking it out right now in that game. We'll be followed by Oklahoma, Colorado. Old Dominion, the lowest seed left here in the tournament. Number seven seed. Certainly haven't played like it in the first three rounds. But the way UConn's playing, they make anyone look like a number seven. A turnover there, and you know Gino Ariema can't stand it. I wonder if that was just a triangle, too. It'd be interesting to see if they come with some junk now down the stretch. Maiga gets it to drop. UConn, 11 turnovers now, and the foul there giving Maiga a chance at a three-point play. Well, you've got a player for the dribble drive. You see that Jones is backed off her just a bit. But as she steps toward her, you got to keep giving her space. Yeah, you tend to see when you give somebody a couple steps as they get closer to the rim to step closer, but you can keep giving her a little bit of space on the way to the rim. 
Almiga misses the opportunity at the three-point play, but UConn misses the rebound. So it's back to ODU. Just under 17 minutes to go. 60 to 39. Connecticut stays man to man off that inbound. Hamsha to Maiga. Can't get it to roll. Asia Jones pulling down the rebound. She had an absolutely terrific Big East Championship, was named the tournament MVP. Now, when UConn is ahead this much, Gina Ariema does use the timeouts to teach, to work on things. They know they're getting everybody's best game, and there's the 12th turnover forced, but getting it right back is Cash. No basket, but she does draw the foul. There wasn't a whole lot of space to make that pass. But it's Bear 2, and it's her fourth, Doris. Ugh. Well, a poor pass, and Thompson gets a piece, and she loses it. Swin just gets a step, and then watch this. The reach slap by Bear 2. If you're Bear 2, now, is it maybe a ticky tack foul? Perhaps, but you don't put it in the hands of the official there. If you don't have good position initially, don't make them make, make the decision, because you certainly don't want to go over to the sideline. She's played just eight minutes in the game, committed four fouls in those eight minutes. 60 to 39. Well, Keisha Howard and company and Kim Giddens on the floor, replacing Bear 2. Old Dominion, three and two in Elite Eight games. So Keisha Howard there slashing to the basket. A poor choice defensively by Bird. Though Howard can stick it. I'd rather make her a dribble driver. You gotta close out under control on Howard. She has 12 points, was the leading scorer on this ODU team when she got injured. She's dropped to number two on the team. Bird, no problem. So tough. Howard overcommits. She knows exactly what to do. 18 points now for Sue Bird, the senior. <laughs> Tiffany Thompson can shoot it from out there, which is why Tamika Williams is all over. Nice high-low pass. Down to Thompson underneath from Myga, and she draws the foul. And that's on Williams. That's her third. So Tamika Williams now with third. A little concern for Gino Ariema. 62-41. All right, and here it's a 21-point lead for Connecticut as we check in with Beth Bowens once again. Beth. Well, thanks, Michelle. Well, I'm uh, sitting up here in the Connecticut section with Nancy Bird, who is here watching her daughter, Sue. And you had a chance to talk with Sue a little earlier today. What was the mood of the team coming in tonight? I think they were rested and confident. I think they did their jobs, and I think they were not cocky, but very confident that they were going to do well today. What has Sue enjoyed most about uh, playing with this year's UConn team? Uh, I think she's enjoyed just about everything. I know she loves the players. They have a good time all the time. Uh, they laugh around with each other. They're, they have they just have a good time. She's enjoyed traveling. She loves the fans. I know she loves the coaches, the whole staff. She had a really good time with that. Now, growing up on Long Island, uh, both you and Sue and, and the family had to make some sacrifices for her to attend Christ the King. And, and uh, one of the things you wanted to do is improve her chances of coming to a program like Connecticut. Has it, has it all been worth it through all the tough times? Yes, very much. I think we made the right choices. I know that um, we were very serious about the choices. We certainly hoped that we did make the right choices. We were certainly uh, concerned academically as well as sports-wise. Um, I think we did a very good job. I think Sue did a good job. Sue made it work. Sue made it work. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your time, Nancy. She wants to get back to watch the action, guys. Well, Beth, Sue always seems to make it work. Uh, if, if you ask Gina Ariema what makes this team work, it's Sue Bird makes it work. She's had two double-doubles on the year. This one here tonight, and in the opener against Fairfield, 21 points and a dozen assists. And Sue Bird and her mom, just a little to the academic side of things, they really encouraged, both her mom and her dad encouraged her to take a look at the likes of Stanford and Duke. And yeah, Sue really said in the press conference yesterday that it was really never a second choice. Uh, Connecticut was in her mind from the get-go, and uh, certainly academically there is plenty to offer at Connecticut. I think really from the best of both worlds, it's worked out for Sue Bird. 
And she referred to the team really enjoying one another's company. We asked them yesterday what they're doing, to, what they had done to really, you know, kill the time between games. It's a, it's a long couple of days. And they mentioned playing games like Bop It, actually having a Bop It tournament. And apparently Swin Cash is the dominator in the Bop It circuit, uh, playing some magnetic fishing kind of game that I didn't really understand. But today their classes started up again, so they had a study hall. And they really do enjoy each other. And, and they enjoy playing as well as they're playing right now. Great inbounds look to Asia Jones. Asia Jones has played superb basketball. I know Jones, 16 points, four boards. She did not play well when these two teams met in December. She said it was a turning point for her. She said it was a close game. My team needed me, and I didn't show. Well, guess what? Tonight, Asia Jones has showed beautifully. She was definitely not a no-show during the Big East tournament. Sharon Francis driving baseline and draws the foul. So an opportunity for a three-point play. But look at the inbounds play, Doris, on well, the other end for UConn. Against Penn State, they scored easily on a couple of different sets. That's a double screen. You give all your attention to that side. The weak side is wide open. And there's Sharon Francis, as has been consistent for Old Dominion, attacking the rim off the dribble drive. Pretty move. And it was Swin Cash who fouled her. So Cash to the bench with her third foul as Sharon Francis heads to the line, and Jessica Moore comes in to replace Cash. Good on the three-point play, but Sharon Francis shaking out her wrist a little bit. Cash, just the second player in Big East history to lead both the, co the conference in both rebounding and scoring. Only the second time ever done. Bird just drops the lane. Can't get it to drop, but does draw the foul. I think, did she come up high? No, she's fine. Kim Giddens called for the foul. Her first. And back to the line where Sue Bird is so effective. Uh, she's been aggressive. Her mentality has been attack all night long and nearly gets that to fall. She uses the left hand extremely well. Bird's mom talking to Beth talked about the enjoyment of being with her teammates. And one of the things you see consistently through the years are former UConn players like Rebecca Lobo, Kara Walters, Jen Rosati, really coming back and visiting the program, practicing with the team. And Sue Bird said, I can definitely see myself five years from now coming back and mostly terrorizing the younger players, she said. And now she's terrorizing ODU. Tamika Williams gets her hand on after a blocked shot, but Coker brings it home for Old Dominion. I think that's what they thought would be successful tonight because Penn State was so effective, dribble drive, and then on the backside, the help was not constant for Connecticut. Uh, but tonight, the adjustments have been made where that was concerned. Jessica Moore working in the paint, has it deflected. Williams touches it last, and it's Old Dominion basketball. Four seniors, and Bertu, a senior herself, watching from the bench. She is from France, part of the French national team. She had 30 points versus Kansas State. This is not going the same way. No basket, foul inside, an offensive foul, and this is back to UConn. Wow, that was away from the play. Old Dominion was trying to set the skip pass. It was going to be right there. They were going to get a shot. Instead, Giddens gets one down low. Well, we get a look at it right there on the right block. You see Jessica Moore's trying to get out defensively, and that's a hole by Kim Giddens. So Scott Yarbrough, outstanding call. And Swin Cash is back on the floor for Connecticut, so not a long time spent on the bench with the three fouls. But Cash just seven points and one rebound in this game. I, I think teams are certainly keying on her more. If you're going to key on one, it might as well be Swin. Away comes Sharon Francis to Coker on the break. Well done. This, this team will not quit. Uh, you play with pride. This is a program with so much tradition, Old Dominion. Tradition that really started with Nancy Lieberman. Gino Ariema calling the 30. The lead is 
him down to 18. And on Friday, ESPN has exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Final Four from San Antonio. Join Robin Roberts as she hosts the 2002 Women's NCAA Final Four Special at 6.30 Eastern time, followed by two semifinal games at 7 and 9 Eastern. ESPN and ESPN2, your exclusive home for the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Well, we're talking about UConn and how dominant they've been, Doris, but you know, they cut the lead to 18, and Gina Oriana starts to think, are we playing as focused and as well as we should? Well, I think, timeout. yeah, I think the thing that makes them special is they don't play to time and score. Uh, they play to play perfection basketball every single time. He was very upset with Tarazi, over penetration, poor decision, and it's just unacceptable at any time in his mind. And, you know what, I think that's what makes this program as special as it is. Uh, it's something that I know Sherry Cole at Oklahoma has tried to instill in her basketball team. She has worked with Oriema as an assistant on the junior national team and has learned a great deal. Opsatumaga called for the foul, her second, 68 to three to play here at U.S. Cellular Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's been quite a region. UConn advancing with a win over Penn State, a hard-fought win in the Sweet 16, and Old Dominion with a dominating performance over Kansas State. Lucien Bertu back in for Old Dominion with four fouls. She is their leading scorer, Conference Player of the Year in the Colonial Athletic Association. But she got into foul trouble early in this game and has had to spend a good amount of time on the bench. Three-pointer by Bird doesn't fall. Bear two has the rebound. Hamsha to Maiga. Trying to get things organized for ODU. Nice look inside to Bear two. She is fouled. And it could be Swin Cash with number four. And it is. So the 22-year-old out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania, with four fouls. Yeah, it's not been a typical cash evening, but this is what Bear 2 specializes, getting good post position, seals the defender high. And boy, it would have been a different story if they could have established her early, but that foul trouble took her completely out of the game. Aisha Jones comes back in for Swin Cash. And just a good seal high, and Williams trying to get good position. Now that was something Kansas State did not do against Bear 2. They were content to stay behind. Bear 2 missing. Just a 60% free throw shooter. Monique Coker back into the game for Sharon Francis for the Lady Monarchs. Sue Berg will look to extend this lead or at least play a perfect possession. As you mentioned earlier, Doris. Off the foot, it'll stay UConn basketball. Of the four seniors, three on the floor now. Ashley Battle out there with them. She's a redshirt freshman and also Maria Conlon, who is a sophomore. And that's Battle who's fouled on her way up. Ashley Battle, six foot out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Lindsley School in West Virginia is where she played her high school ball. Kim Giddens called for her third. So a lot of foul trouble in the post in general for Old Dominion. Battle shoots about 73% from the strike. Now we're looking at a player who's going to have to step up her role next season for Connecticut in Ashley Battle. Now these are her numbers, very respectable off the bench, a much maligned bench for Connecticut, but she and Moore given a good push, given plenty of minutes but next season, she's going to become more of an offensive player. Right now, Keisha Howard and Old Dominion know that this trampling has at least reached a plateau. And trying to cut into this 18-point lead a little more. Missing there, Asia Jones gets it to Sue Bird. Oh, Bird tripping in the paint. None of these players afraid to be aggressive. Diana Tarazi, one of the most aggressive offensively and personality-wise, coming back in 
for the Huskies, replacing Ashley Battle. Uh, the mind is first to push, push, push. She looked like she lost control. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that's a tough call. And he gets bailed out at the end by Okeisha Howard. Howard called for her second. Bird, who rarely misses, is at the line. Watch Sue Bird's right front foot. You know, normally you say square the rim with your feet. She is not square. That right foot in a strange position to shoot the free throw, but it's effective. I'm not going to question it. 93% effective. Sharon Francis coming back in. She doesn't appear to be limping, Sue Bird. She went down hard. She's picking it up a little bit, though, that right foot. She's, uh, it, it's not perfect. She also fell hard on her wrist a little bit earlier, and I noticed her shaking that off. Diana Taurasi tipping it out of bounds, 12 on the shot clock for ODU as they get ready to bring it back in, trailing 20. And Lucien Bertou seems to have taken some contact to the right side of her head. It's a guess. Bird reaching in, fighting for the steal. And she'll get it as Sharon Francis touched it last. Well, let's see. You see the hustle. She tries to make a play. And indeed, great camera work. It was Sharon Francis who got it last. 12th turnover on the Lady Monarchs. Monique Coker tossing it up court. And Tamika Williams with a great play under the basket, getting it back into the hands of UConn. Wait, just then, I'll tell you this, they don't get anything. But yeah, Tarazi very subtly looked back just to see what, what might develop. Connell hands it off to Tarazi, off the mark from three. Here comes Maga and company. Well, a traveling call on Old Dominion, trailing by 20 here in Milwaukee at the Mideast Regional Final. Nine minutes to go. UConn wearing the white, Old Dominion in the blue, and a 30-second timeout called by Wendy Larry, who's called a few. Michelle Tafoy alongside Doris Burke and Beth Mullins here at U.S. Cellular Arena, where Connecticut has led from the get-go. This game has not been in doubt and largely due to Sue Bird. Now, at the start of this broadcast, we talked about the best point guard in America, and unquestioningly, that is Sue Bird. She is as good a passer as you'll find in the women's game. Her decision-making is what separates her, but what gives her added value is this, her ability to be an offensive weapon. That little triple drive full of jump shot is hard to guard. 22 points, 10 assists, UConn made its first 13 shots of the game. At one point, shooting over 90% from the floor. Yeah, Bird in the hand is worth two and a swoosh. Now, there are some outstanding backcourts in the country this season. There's no question. You can look to the Big 12, and you can talk about Dales and Caulfield, who very may well end up in San Antonio themselves. But I think when you look at the complete package of Bird and Tarazi, they are the best backcourt in the country. And according to Gino Oriema, perhaps the best backcourt ever to play in the women's college game. Yeah, now they're higher scoring tandems, but I don't think the complete package. Bird losing it out of bounds. What the four seniors on this team have done collectively are probably more staggering achievements than what they've done individually. They've ended their careers on a 48-game home winning streak. They are 133 and nine overall so far with a national title in the year 2000 and determined to get there again. Out of bounds, last touch by Connecticut. Look at those. Four Big East titles, four tournament titles. Four 1,000-point scores. One of the things Ariama said about these seniors, he said, you know, sometimes your recruits, they work out. And sometimes they don't. He said it's amazing to have four of them not only work out, but all score 1,000 points while they're here. And as you mentioned, this Old Dominion team is not folding. They're not going anywhere. They're playing. Staying in it on both ends. Cash 
finding Bird. Four on the shot clock. Asia Jones aware of it, gets the roll. Okay, that's a prime example of why they're dangerous, because they're the best transition team in America. But that was about the eighth option off that play. It didn't work, it got under 10, there was no panic, and they just continued. There's great motion from players without the basketball, and they went deep into their set. So you want to play half court basketball? They could do that too. Work the shot clock nearly all the way down, but Okisha Howard refuses to go away. 18 points now, four three-pointers for Okisha Howard. I like her mentality, boy. It is five foot two and nothing but guts and heart, that kid. She plays hard, she competes hard. She and Kim Giddens played AAU basketball together. And Gino Ariema now calling a timeout. He knows that Old Dominion doesn't want to go away, and he wants to make sure his team stays on track. Yeah, yeah, this game has been about 20, Michelle. Connecticut hasn't been able to push it too much further. Well, now on Howard's bucket, uh, they get it a little bit closer. Yeah, you love her mentality, boy. It takes a lot for five foot two to be that deep. She's got to use a lot of legs in that jumper. A strong player. Averages almost 12 points a game for this team. And Wendy Larry really appears to be remaining calm in that huddle. I mean, she knows, as she told Beth Mullins earlier, there's just not a lot you can do to overcome the kind of play they are seeing from UConn. Look how quickly UConn inbounds the basketball. No waiting there at all. And I like how hard they're playing defensively. Old Dominion's staying hard. Connecticut's got to make a little look quick. Shot clock to one. I'm not sure if Swin Cash was even aware of it. I'm not sure she knew the shot clock was as low as it was when they inbounded. Still 72-56. Pacino Ariema wants to talk to his seniors. So Mr. Calipari and Coach Cheney get together. And Preston Shumpert, boy, what a year he started out. The iron tree impacting him, but he seems to have come back around. It's a good night of basketball. Mm -hmm. now, listening in on the UConn bench was Beth Mullins. What did you hear, Beth? Well, Michelle Gino's primary concern was just the focus of this basketball team. He said, hey, we are not executing offensively right now. I can't even draw anything up that we can run right now unless you guys get your heads back in it. Then he went on to tell him, hey, we've got to start rebounding the ball better because they're throwing everybody at the glass and don't stop defending. We're not done yet. Michelle? And indeed they're not, Beth, and, and it's 72 to 56, but what Ariema knows is this isn't the last game of the year, and they've got things to work on to prepare them if and when they do go to San Antonio. There's certainly been a lot less shots, it seems, in this half than the first half the pace of that basketball game. I think it's hard to keep your focus when the, when the point differential is what it was. Moore with the rebound. Off the missed free throw and a full shot clock for Connecticut. Old Dominion set a new NCAA Regionals shooting record in their game against Kansas State, shooting 65.5%. UConn could better that here. Right now, they're shooting 65.9%. Keisha Howard has it blocked by Jessica Moore, but they're going to call a foul. They've been relentless this half. And they have outscored Connecticut 23-17, and they continue to use the triple drive to attack. And that sends Howard to the line. Asia Jones called for her second. At the line for the winning number five, Alicia Howard. Shooting two. Howard has been an integral, integral part of this team since the freshman. Look at the free throw comparison. Last meeting versus this. They met late December. And UConn held on for a 14-point win. It was a similar scenario. UConn playing very well in the first half, and ODU not giving up, playing well in the second. Tamika Williams is coming back in. Old Dominion on a 15-6 run over the last seven and a half minutes as Monique Coker watches on, and Williams back in. It's one foul for her tonight, Sue Bird. Missing, cash the rebound. It's an interesting 
interesting dilemma. Will this kind of lead? Do you spread it and use clock, or do you try to get some momentum back? Because right now, Old Dominion's got it. And it's still a wide spread in the point differential. But boy, I think I want I want that aggressive mentality back for my team if I'm Gina Moriam. So I want to push, I want to rebound, I want to get back in transition. Wendy Larry's team, well, you, you you have to admire how hard they've played here in the second half. Indeed you do, and I think R.E.M. admires that. Coker on the bench. It's Tarasi at the line making the front. She was fouled by Howard. Tarasi, second best free throw shooter on the team, about 82%. That gets her to 20 points, seven assists, three boards. Uh, she has filled up some categories the last two games. And she is a finalist for the two guard of the year, which will be presented on the ESPN, the magazine, college basketball awards show Thursday night. And we'll bring that to you from San Antonio. Great defense with pick and roll. Good teamwork by Jones and Bird. Bear two working in against Jones. Almost losing it over the backcourt line is Howard. Four on the shot clock for Okeisha Howard. Driving. Doesn't get it off on time. Shot clock violation. UConn basketball. That's the defensive intensity that Wendy Larry wants her team to have as well. And they have had it. Just textbook defense and pick and roll, something that Connecticut runs so well offensively. But Jones and Bird, the, the beautiful hedge high by Jones, and Bird recovers textbook. Cash almost losing it off of her foot. Bird is fouled by Sharon Francis. That'll be the third on the senior out of Switland High School in West Latham Hills, Maryland. Well, Duke has advanced. First team in to the Final Four, the number one seed out of the East. One of the longest winning streaks in the NCAA. Connecticut leads 36. Duke extended theirs to 22. And Old Dominion trying to hang on for number 22. Wendy Larry calls a timeout. And she is right at this team right now. Elena Beard, another sensational game for Gail Guestin Kors. She also a finalist for that two guard of the year. Playing great. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship continues tonight at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. It's the Midwest Regional Final. Chantel Anderson and number one seeded Vanderbilt face the second seed, Tennessee. ESPN and ESPN2, your exclusive home for the NCAA Women's Basketball Championships. We know Duke is in. And Tennessee Vanderbilt part three. They split the regular season series, did not meet in the SEC tournament after Tennessee was eliminated by LSU. But they meet again tonight. Vanderbilt having such a good season. No love lost between those two programs. That is a rivalry extraordinaire. And tempo will be key. But I like Vera Jones' thoughts about Kara Lawson because Lawson, the, the most. Uh, I don't know how to say this exactly, but I think the best competitor on that Tennessee basketball team. It's her mentality more than anything that impresses you with Kara Lawson. She's fired. Suburb makes them both. And she has a career high. She's got a 24 points. Her career high is 25, which she's achieved twice, and she's one away from that right now. Swin Cash getting in there trying to steal it, but Bear 2 keeps it for ODU. Shot clock to 10. Francis drives into the paint. Can't get it to roll. Cash tried to rebound it, but down hard, and Hamshatu Maiga, relentless, gets it to score. Swin Cash is not pleased. No, that was what Beth Mowens had just said from Gino Oriemi. You've got to stay on the glass because they are sending lots of bodies. It is 16 points and another UConn turnover, and Ariema is beside himself. Well, I think Sue Bird just took a pretty good shot to the face on that strip, and that's why she lost the basketball. 18 Husky turnover. Maiga off the mark, Bird the rebound, and it looks like she's going to slow it down. Yeah, you see, she's it, that weak hand is going up toward her face. <laughs> Play here in Milwaukee. Winner to San Antonio. To me, 
takeaways, the hoop and the foul. And Williams, a terrific shooter, gets high percentage shots and is able to add to her scoring with the free throws. Well, pretty play. The pick and roll doesn't work, but she comes to the strong side and there, posting up on the opposite block, is Tamika Williams. Lots of options off every set for this basketball team. Tiffany Thompson was called for the foul, her second. Bear two goes to the bench, still saddled with four. And a timeout as Williams has her seventh point in the game, 79-60, 3-9-60, UConn on top. And Sue Bird is our Nike player of the game, 24 points, eight of eight from the strike, 11 assists, one shy of her career high assist total, one shy of her career high point total. And I think we may have some Final Four champion or Mideast Regional Championship t-shirts all ready to go. Bird must have gotten hit in the eye because she, she does keep rubbing that eye. Mm -hmm. 3.15 to go. Keisha Howard, a nice pass. And the make by Sharice Grant. Grant, who redshirted last season, has become a key off the bench for Old Dominion this season. That shot no good. Sharon Francis, the bounce pass to Coker. That attempt too easy and the putback too easy as well. And I, I think even though Gino Ariema's team is up, he's not pleased with their play down the stretch here. Yeah, they've certainly lost focus. Olderman is just trying to play hard, play this string out here. Connecticut. Yeah, they're actually in a triangle in two, which is interesting. They've been in this for a good part of this half, Old Dominion, just trying to make something happen. And there have been times where it's been effective. Certainly the scoring is down in the second half. So that triangle in two has been effective at points. Tamika Williams able to convert, and she's got nine. One of the things that has amazed the fans here in Wisconsin as Asia Jones blocks it out of bounds. Were the, was the open shoot around the first day they were here. That was Friday, and the teams got to shoot around. UConn was first, and a good number of people showed up, and they were astonished by some of the drills that this team ran flawlessly. So are they talented? Yes. Experienced? Yes. Smart? You bet. But extremely well-disciplined, and you saw it early in this game, like a well-oiled machine. We've talked about this before, but it's, uh, it's the way they conduct themselves in practice that I think carries over beautifully. And Bob Knight used to talk about the will to prepare to win. Wholesale subs about to come in for Connecticut as the clock winds down. Five on the shot clock. Bird takes it from Jones. Pulls up. Bullseye. And now a career high. 26 points for Bird on this terrific night where she has simply taken over for Connecticut. With 102 to go, 83-64, we check in with Robin Roberts in the studio. Robin. Hey, Michelle, the next semifinal, and the national semifinals on Friday, I should say, UConn will face the winner of our next game between the Tennessee Lady Vols. Oh, they're feeling it right now. About to take on SEC foe Vanderbilt. That's coming up next, Michelle. Boy, Tennessee, Robin, looks ready to roll. They face Vanderbilt. Tennessee inspired by the fact that they were a number two seed instead of a one. And I think Pat Summit uh, incensed a bit by the fact that she was put into the same region with Vanderbilt and had to face them again. It's probably the most polite way to put it, incensed. She was all fired up. This feels like the RPI, the strength of schedule, which was number one 
was deserving of it, but look at this young woman. I think Wendy Larry put it best when she said the ball is in the hands of the master. She is that. And she is the most outstanding player of the Mideast region, Super MVP. And the all-tournament team is routed out by Dan Diana Tarazi, Asia Jones, and Tamika Williams of Connecticut. And Lucienne Bertu of Old Dominion makes the team. Okeisha Howard has been the fire plug for ODU tonight. Marie Conlon trying to hang on to the steal for UConn and does. Well, Old Dominion will complete its season 28 and 6. They were perfect in conference. And they have made the Sweet 16 in six out of the last seven years. Wendy Larry is a sensational coach. A little bit upset with the seventh seed. Well, they made their point in this tournament. Monique Coker, Lucien Bertu, and Hamsha Tumaiga right there. Played very well. And UConn is going to the Final Four for the third consecutive time. They remain defeated at the end of this game. They will be 37-0, two away from tying Tennessee's record season of 39-0. That backcourt, 48 points and 18 assists, Bird and Tarazi. Bird, Tarazi, and Jones have combined for 66 points. Turnover force this time, Ashley Battle. And you're seeing the future generation of UConn on the floor right now, minus Diana Tarazi, who will certainly be the focal point of this team. And they get Ann Struther, the top, team, the top player in high school ball right now, named National Player of the Year. Clock winding down on a terrific season for Old Dominion. Had a beautiful performance versus Kansas State to advance to this point, but UConn comes away the winner. They are going to the Final Four. 85-64 the final. Coming up next is the Midwest Regional Final, Vanderbilt and Tennessee. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports and exclusive home of the NCAA Women's Basketball.